I'm I'm uh, Sabarinathan Sampat, Senior Vice President with RACNAP, welcoming you all to this webinar. Uh, what uh, I would like to talk about today is uh, how we re and RACNAP can help you as cloud solution providers with an automation platform to run your business efficiently and profitably. And the primary focus today will be on the Microsoft uh, CSP Tier 1 and the Tier 2 program in terms of how RACNAP is able to help with that process as well. That's what we'll primarily cover today from a purchasing standpoint, from a customer purchasing journey, from a partner onboarding journey, and uh, how the customer is able to manage his services and how as an administrator, they are able to manage the services of the end customers. So we'll go through all of that today. Uh, I hope you are all able to see my screen. If yes, uh, if you could, if someone could type uh, it on the confirmation of the chat window, uh, that will be great. Okay, I hear an S, so that's all good. So let's uh, get going. So uh, RackNap is a cloud services delivery platform uh, helping to automate the provisioning of cloud services and help build those cloud services as well. Because uh, in, this, in this day and age where cloud services are becoming very commoditized, it's very important to run a very slick, streamlined operational process with automation as much as possible so that you can have uh, efficiency savings straight away. And also from a billing standpoint, you want to be able to give your end customers the visibility of how much are their bills going to be, etc. Because cloud services are now being charged on a typical pay-per-use model. So cost very important to keep the customer updated on the whole thing. So that's where RackNet comes in to be able to help in the process. And for you to be able to run your business, you will need to have an efficient backend, you know, sales process and marketing process and a solution in the backend, along with support processes, inventory management and everything. So this is where RackNap also is able to help you with a tool to do all of it. So going into the next slide here, um, this is the functional architecture of RackNap, whereby you can see RackNap offers you a marketplace whereby you are able to sell to your end customers directly via the CSP tier one model, where with you can display all your products and services in the marketplace and then reach your customers directly. And then RackNap also has the capability to cater to the needs of tier two audience, which is channel partner rules, whereby you can publish your products and services to your channel partners, and they can then subsequently get a white labeled website themselves, and then use that to sell to their end customers. So RackNap is uniquely positioned to sell and cater to the needs of CSPs tier one and tier two. Okay. And going into the kind of services, what can be offered on the platform? If you are an MSP already, our managed services provider or a hosting provider already offering a number of services right now, which includes, let's say, VPSs, dedicated servers, or shared hosting, WordPress hosting kind of services or domain names, you can combine those traditional services along with new age cloud services, which includes the likes of Office 365, Azure, Exchange Online, Dynamics 365, etc. from the Microsoft Office, Microsoft catalog. 
or you can also sell the additional other cloud provider services as well which includes the things like Amazon Web Services or IBM SoftLayer or if you have a private cloud setup with OpenStack you can use that as well. So RackNap helps you to offer these services all under one umbrella. Okay? So the most important aspect here is um, RackNap is cloud provider agnostic in the sense that we aggregate cloud services and help you to launch them to your end customers. And you are not constrained by the services what you see here. If you have your own services in your organization, which you want to publicly sell, RackNap Marketplace is the place where you can put it and then your end customers can go and see it and purchase it online. That's the effectiveness of uh, RackNap uh, aggregating services and uh, from a domain perspective we have integrations done with OpenSRS and logic boxes whereby these are domain provisioning platforms along with emails as well. So these are primarily now considered as customer acquisition tools. So with this you are able to offer a cheaper product but then gradually stand to upsell them with additional services. So that's where RackNap specializes, uh, speciality comes in. And if you are a hosting provider, if you are offering hosting services, you can combine you know, using cPanel plus panel licenses to go with it as well. So the entire gamut of services, what can be offered is under this bracket here. Uh, as I said, you are not constrained to sell only the ones from here. You can add additional services as well. And then the different modules which power these services are the ones which are down below here. For example, the ordering module helps to collate orders from your end customers and then bundle them together and then be able to sell that as well. Uh, and, then we, and then you have a billing module which helps you to bill your end customers depending on the billing model you have prescribed for them. So you can do prepaid model billing, postpaid, one-time billing, recurring billing, or pay-per-use model. Okay, so you can do different billing options, and all of that is possible on the platform already. And from a provisioning standpoint, RackNap helps to automatically provision the services via API calls, with which you can uh, provision the services instantaneously, real time. So customers get to see action immediately. And then RackNet also helps to do manual provisioning or help in the process of manual provisioning. So let's say you're offering managed services, you can define that as a plan in the marketplace. Get the customer to, to purchase that plan. And then you can continue to build that automatically because there is no provisioning per se to be done for a managed services plan because it's a manual activity which your team will be doing in the back end. So you can define such plans. If you are having hardware in your premises, if you want to sell that hardware, let's say voice over IP phones, headsets, and things like that, if you would like to sell them, you can sell them using RackNap as well. And uh, very important that you keep the customer informed all the time of how much he has consumed, what are all the issues if he is facing, give him an opportunity to log those tickets, etc. So some service capability comes in very handy, which helps the customer to be able to manage all of his services himself. Where not possible, he will have to report all of these issues using the support module there as well. So this is where the support module comes in. So when you are when you are offering these services to your end customers, you need to have a robust support uh, service behind it so that you are able to have and maintain customer experience and satisfaction as well. Okay. In addition to that. Um, RackNap also gives you a comprehensive CRM module, uh, something similar to, I would say, uh, Dynamics 365, whereby it's able to manage the customer relationship and track all the interactions as well. 
And then from an inventory management perspective, if you already have data center assets with you and uh, hardware and software with you, then RackNap can help uh, manage that and track the inventory as well directly on the platform. And also from a sales and marketing perspective, if you have leads coming into your platform, then you can track the leads and, and manage the sales life cycle. And marketing standpoint, you want to be in touch with your end customer. So which means you will need to be engaging with them with notification emails or mailing campaigns or running promotions, etc. So you can do that by our app now. And then from a partner management perspective, if you are a tier two partner, engaging and selling via the partner channels then RackNap helps you with the partner management capability and then last but not the least is business intelligence whereby uh, you as an exec if you want to know the status of your health of your organization or service of business then you will be able to actually look at the business intelligence reports and understand all of that Okay. So that's effectively what RackNap is able to do. So what you're looking at is a, a functional architecture of RackNap, giving you everything what can be offered to tier one and tier two partners. Moving on. Now, this is uh, probably a very text heavy slide. So I'm not go deep into each one of them. Uh, I will go into very key salient aspects of what is high level in, in high level. For example, uh, billing configuration, I mentioned that we can do different billing models, one-time billing, recurring paper use, etc. You can sell your traditional services and new edge cloud services. You can send one bill to the customer and then then platform also can do multiple currencies as well. So whereby if you are offering the services in multiple countries, then you are in a position to actually uh, charge or invoice the customer in different currencies as well. And then from a payment gateway perspective, RackNap has integration done with different payment gateways, whereby you are able to collect payments automatically from the customer and against your merchant ID, and then credit your account accordingly. So primarily RackNap is a software organization. We provide software only so every relationship we will be between you and your vendor who likely to be Microsoft in this scenario etc okay. and then one other important thing is multi partner management rack members a capability to offer different partner models for example there is a discount model whereby customers gets discounts depend or partners gets discounts based on number of volumes they sell, commissions as well, similar capability. Uh, and then the other important aspect is these partners get white label website as well. You know, whereby let's say you are offering 10 products of which you are wanting your, your channel partner also to sell those 10. And you can actually entice him to sell more by asking him to include the partner's own products as well, you know, with which you're actually enticing him to be more uh, selling more in that sense, right? So you can do that as well on the platform. And then from a customer service perspective, end customer can manage his services, look at the support tickets and billing as well. And then most importantly is uh, it's very important to stay relevant in this day because uh, cloud services are highly competitive. So you need to have a very good SEO friendly and responsive marketplace whereby when someone searches for CSP in your country, for example, you need to be able to be higher up in the ranking chain. So that's where we work with you to define search engine optimization tags and then help you higher up in the ranking chain as well. Um, moving on, this is primarily a screenshot of an end customer record, giving you details of his profile, you know, his products and services will be purchasing, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll go through that in the live demo. This is just a screenshot of visual representation now going in here this is basically a screenshot of a support module as well i'll quickly skip them through dashboard for execs this is primarily where you as a service owner 
can understand the health of your service in terms of revenues coming in and also from an ordering standpoint the total order volumes etc etc as well and then this is a, a data a RACNAP diagram RACNAP RAC diagram which helps, helps you to understand the data center rack occupancy or utilization rates whereby you you can understand how much how many of these racks are occupied how many of them are not occupied which means you can start allocating the load accordingly etc so that's one of the benefits of having this kind of a report this also helps you to understand what your inventory levels are you know uh, that's a very handy thing and uh, very importantly RACNAP is a software company. We are interested in developing software, productizing it, and helping you to run an efficient cloud service business. Saying that when you are launching your cloud services or you're wanting to enhance your existing services with cloud offerings, RACNAP can offer assistance by offering professional help in SEO space or email marketing whereby we can help you with lead generation and also we can help you with migration services as well whereby you can onboard uh, customers in bulk and we help with migration activities as well and then uh, we can also be an extension of your support team whereby we can offer white label L2 and L3 technical support as well. So RACNAP helps with professional services resources to be able to be able to run your operations effectively. Right? So with that, uh, I've come to the end of uh, what I want to demonstrate, show you to you on the PPT. Um, be happy to move on to the live demo. Yeah, um, what I want to state before I start the demo is uh, how we want to proceed today is the purchasing journey of a customer who is coming on to a cloud service provider to purchase a product. That's what we will look at firstly. Then subsequently, we will look at all the experience of the customer, how he is able to manage all of that, and then the experience of the administrator. Okay, So we will look at it more from a tier one model. And then once we finished with that, then we will go to the tier two model where we will look at how to onboard a partner, etc. as well. So that's how the flow will be. So this is a website of our marketplace of a cloud solution provider who is offering cloud services. They are a CSP and they are offering cloud services. They've logically grouped the products into different categories. For example, they are a domain registrar. They offer a number of domains. They are a hosting provider. They offer a number of hosting services. They are a CSP tier one. So they are offering Office 365 directly to their end customers, etc. And then uh, uh, plus additional email services. They're offering cloud services, which is where Amazon, AWS, and everything comes into picture. Uh, and then they also have partner onboarding process as well. So effectively, they are uh, a cloud solutions provider offering a wide range of services, including managed services as well. Okay. So now going into the purchasing journey, if you look at it, Microsoft Azure is offered in multiple different ways. One is on a prepaid model where you provision the services with a predefined configuration of a virtual machine instance. Or in this scenario, we will do a typical pay per use model of purchase for an end customer. So here in this pay per use model, as the as the name says, the customer has to pay for whatever service he is consuming. So there is nothing for him to pay upfront. Okay? So the customer just needs to sign up for a subscription. The subscription gets provisioned against his account. He consumes it and he is billed accordingly. So the customer clicks on sign up. The system is asking whether I'm a new customer or an existing customer. I'm just going to simulate the behavior of an existing customer. So if you see here, if the system is now authenticating against the RACNAP backend. And what's important to note is 
this is there is something called an azure fund this is like a security deposit which this provider has mandated for customers to provide so why because if you think about it on a paper use model microsoft will charge you irrespective of whether the end customer pays you or not so in this scenario, there is a higher risk for you that the customer may over consume or overuse a significant load overnight, you know, which means you are at risk that, that you're not alerting the customer sufficiently quick enough. So what RackNet was able to do is offer the capability to define the security deposit or you can also call it as a credit limit as well in some ways as an advanced token for this particular service you can decide to change this number to any number whatever you like this provider has chosen to keep it as 5000 you can define it as zero or 1000 whatever you like so in this scenario the customer the service provider has chosen to demand a deposit and one of the prerequisites for doing this uh, service is uh, uh, the host name okay. for example i'm just checking whether this uh, host name is available uh, if yes then we can add that to the cart and then subsequently make the payments and get that progressed so with regard to the payment processing we have integration done with different payment gateways for example we have it done it with paypal you can also for enterprise customers they don't typically make tend to make payments online so they will be paying you know for example non-online may not real time they will still be making payments online maybe via bank transfer etc but it doesn't have to happen immediately so in here because this provider is demanding some money upfront it's taken me to the payment page the customer selects any of the payment options and then when he clicks on pay now the payments get processed and then he gets his azure subscription provisioned so that's exactly what will happen when the payment process is is completed and one of the other things what i want to highlight here is this is, uh, for example, if the customer already owes some money, then that gets displayed in here. And if you see here, this is basically the exact subscription what the customer would be provisioned with. And if there is a promotion running, then the customer puts in his details and he gets that promotion details also applied as well. So this is, in summary, a purchasing flow for a customer making a purchase of an Azure subscription. So in, what is happening here is the customer, once the services are provisioned, the customer gets an email with his login details for uh, the services what he has provisioned. Okay? Uh, now let me jump on to the customer portal to demonstrate the capability, what is possible in the customer portal. But prior to that, TrackMap also has a capability whereby you can enable chat options, whereby you can engage the customer in a conversation by having this chat windows, etc. You can also ha have details captured via these opt-in lead forms, whereby these are leads which are generated from here. When customer puts in this, these details get captured in the back end. So these are like pop-up forms. Okay? So, We've looked at customers' purchasing journey. So now let's look at the customer's self-service portal where he's able to manage his services. Okay. So now I've just logged on to his portal because I was logged in as a guy called Nitesh. And now I've logged on to his portal, self-service portal. If you see here, it's broadly classified into three categories. One is a my services, this is basically a list of all the services, whatever he has purchased so far. And this is my support. This is a list of uh, tickets, what he has logged, support tickets, you can log afresh, you can do check all of that from here. And as a customer, I'm keen to know what my billing details are in terms of invoices, etc. So I can look at them all in here. So now I've just chosen an Azure subscription which was provisioned and I'm checking usage right now. So what has happened is customer's subscription got provisioned. Customer has received CSP credential details and he has now used that details to create various services or applications on 
their Azure portal. So he has created VMs, etc. So what RackMap is doing is collecting usage now for this date against these broader categories. For example, this is, he has consumed a geo-redundant table, he has done this operation, and he has consumed 0 0.029 units of this one. And Microsoft defines a cost price for each of the SKUs on offer. And you as a service provider are given the ability to set up a selling price which is primarily the margins you set. Let's say you want to have a 30% margin on top of Microsoft's cost price. So once you set up that margin, then RatNap actually uh, applies that final rate on the consumed data and then calculates the final value here. So this is primarily the total calculated value. And if you look at it, the customer also created A1 machine and A2 V2 instance, et cetera, et cetera. The total comes up to this, for example, this is 1414. And what RackMap has capability to do is to check how much of this 1414 stacks up against the security deposit what was collected. So, which means we, the as a service provider, provider was demanding five thousand, and now it is checking how much of the five thousand is consumed, one thousand five hundred. So that's a, uh, maybe a little less than thirty percent. Okay. So in this scenario, the the customer is aware of his consumption, so he can look at his consumption straight away here. What is uh, another unique feature of RackMap is RackMap is able to send automatic emails to the customer when certain thresholds are reached. For example, if the customer has reached 2,500 rupees, then, then he is able to get an alert, for example, at 50% consumption to say, yes, 2,500 out of 5,000 is consumed. Okay. And similarly, this alerts can be customized to based on your, your needs. You can alert him at much more frequency, much less frequency, etc. So all of this is completely controlled by you. So this consumption data is checked on a regular basis. And let me just show you where this can be configured. For example, this is configured in the service alerts master. You as a service provider can configure this in the back end here. So there is a service alerts defined for Azure. And in here, to see here, if for Azure Cloud, if the consumption has reached 70% of the available credit, which is 5,000, then initiate one of the emails from here. If it's consumed up to 80%, initiate an email. 90% initiate an email. So that customer is continuously updated of it. And you as a service provider, finance team can also be updated of it as well. And then in addition to that, there is a 100% limit also. You can set whereby we can send a suspension request to Azure to actually suspend that subscription for a period of time. Okay? So we can we can do that as well via the automation uh, section so this is one of the features whereby the paper use model calculates actual usage and on the day of the invoice uh, on the day of the billing the invoices are generated with this latest information in terms of consumption and that's what actually gets billed as well Okay, so uh, I hope that has given you a sense of how the paper use model works for Azure and giving very clear usage consumption details as well. Okay, so now let's look at the other details as well against this customer's record. For example, his Azure portal details are also clearly here, subscription details are here. We are told what day the consumption was done, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And similarly, if you want to look at other services, let's say the customer has not just purchased this, he's purchased a few more services, and that's how you see them all in here. So you see all of those details in here, giving exact details of every single plan or service what has been purchased. Okay. 
So uh, let me see if I can get you an Office 365 subscription, right? So this customer has also purchased an Office 365 subscription. He has, this is the username and password for it. This is a subscription ID for Office 365. He has done, purchased two emails. And then the due date, which is when it was due for renewal. And from an upgrade standpoint, let's say this customer has had another 12 people join his organization. So the RACNAP, what it can do is it can actually uh, offer an upgrade option for the customer whereby he can go ahead and click on upgrade, uh, uh, add new, and then he'll be able to actually purchase new licenses as well from here. So this is real self-service capability where he's able to look at all the details and do self-service himself. And then from a domains perspective, RackMap has integration done with open SRS and logic boxes, whereby uh, the customer can update various of his personal details directly in here, which actually goes back into the open SRS or logic boxes panel itself. So name server updates, EPP updates, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever needs to be done can be done on the platform here and that's directly reflected in the provider's portal as well, okay? Then from a billing standpoint, you can do different billing options and things like that. And that's, uh, that's uh, and you can do an automatic renewal also from here as well. So what you're seeing is effectively domain related uh, functions. And then uh, when you are offering, for example, upsell of services, you can define all of that under the recommended section. And from a current offer section, you are able to actually understand uh, or offer any, uh, any, any particular discounts or anything and then publish it here, which means it stands out for the customer in this area. This is now a support module where the customer has the ability to, to log support tickets. For example, the customer clicks on submit tickets here. This is where it will end up in your queue, in your support queue of RACNAP, whenever a system logs a ticket. For example, this customer says, I have a problem with a particular service. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, he's able to, let's say I have a support issue and I'm having a problem with FTP. I don't know. So there is some issue with FTP. So what the system is able to do is from its knowledge base, prompts him for some help to say, hey, are you really having an FTP creation error? Then have you tried this, this, and this? This is like a primarily a knowledge base or a self-help feature, which helps him to understand the cause of issues, what he's really facing and help him with some options to resolve it quicker. And then subsequently, if you look at the next tab here, so if you want to make any announcements around system downtime, uptime, security alerts, notifications, and things like that, you can do that directly in the announcement section. Uh, email lots, as people are drowning themselves in emails, uh, we're categorizing emails completely in a separate section so that it's easy for them to understand what are the communication between uh, the provider and then customer. So that, that can be tracked in the email log section. And then from a, from a billing section, the, the entire financial transaction details, all of them are listed here. For example, this is a ledger containing in debit notes, credit notes, invoices, orders, etc., etc. So you can check all of that in here. And then if you look at, let's say, a sample invoice here, so this is a paid invoice, which means let me, you can click this C invoice and see. So for example, this is uh, the, the, name of the, the name of the provider, the address, whether it's a paid date or not, and then the service uh, in terms of what the payment relates to, etc. as well. And as I mentioned, RACNAP is GST compliant from an uh, Indian setup. So you can see different taxation. So you will have different taxations in your different countries as well. So we will be able to configure the platform to cater to your local needs as well. Okay. So that's one of uh, the capabilities of RACNAP. So to, and also if you look at this, then you have invoices, then you have services for renewal. So whereby this gives primarily a list of every service which renewal is pending for some reason or other. Okay. So in summary, what we have looked at is capability of a RACNAP customer 
in terms of what functions he can perform inside his control panel. Okay? So I hope you got a sense of uh, uh, what the customer can do as a part of the purchasing journey. Now after he has purchased, how he is able to manage his services, I hope you are able to see that as well. All right, cool. So that's uh, that's uh, everything to do with the customer side. So now let me go back to the administrator side. So let me focus on things which relate to you, you as a service provider. So if I start here, let's say the customer uh, uh, administrator is now logging in. So he logs on to his portal. He is a super administrator, so he has access to pretty much all functions what RackNap offers. So, well, because I'm logging as a super administrator, I can see a number of options available. For example, this is a dashboard section giving me primarily details about you know total revenue numbers and things like that. For example, I can also look at order volumes as well, whereby it gives me order volumes around, you know, for example, the weekly data, daily data, etc. So it's very useful and visually uh, represented for uh, the senior management team to understand the order volumes and things like that. And then, for example, fresh paid invoices, how many invoices have come in for the day, how many are un unpaid invoices, etc., for the month. And for example, when you click on this date, it actually opens up a new window with all the details as well. You know, so you can export that data as well. So what you're seeing is dashboard report. And for example, if you're looking at renewal information, then it really helps you uh, with starting to chase the customer for renewals as well. So for example, the renewal income report, whereby this is taken care by the appropriate finance department, and then they can start renewal conversations, etc. as well. So you can do that also from a platform. Okay. Then from a support module perspective, support dashboard perspective, you as a provider can uh, can look at what are all the support tickets log, which are all the maximum uh, reported issues, etc. So you can look at all of that in this section here. Right? Similarly, from a sales standpoint, I want to look at what are my sales for this month, okay, or this week, or this uh, this year, etc. So you can look at all of that from here, and also. You can look at it from a product perspective as well. So here, if you look at it, this this is primarily saying how much of the sales for cloud services for fresh sales, renewal sales, upgrades, and add-ons as well. So you can primarily understand how much is your product sales going, are they satisfactory enough, etc. So you can understand all of that in one shot directly here. Okay. And then similarly, from a from a lead management perspective, can give you details of lost leads and things like that. Uh, from an inventory standpoint, gives you details of all the inventory, what you have got. Uh, and then EPBX, whereby we have integration done with the metrics, which is an EPBX uh, open source tool, with which you can understand, for example, call volumes from certain extensions where PBX is connected to. So which means it gives you a real picture of workload availability for individual staff members. And also you can filter this by actually total number of people too. Uh, or total extension number of people too as well. So which means I am on my extension 603, it gives me how many calls I have made on this number, etc. as well. So that's one of the, the very key attributes of, of uh, RackNap whereby it can give you drill down data to understand the details in a very close way. Okay. So that's everything, Probably there are a couple more things in this world, but I wouldn't bore you with all the details because uh, some of them are pretty self-explanatory. So this is everything what a uh, end customer can see once, sorry, what, what an administrator can see after he has logged in successfully as well. Okay. So now let's look at a particular uh, customer's record, how it appears on the platform. For example, I've just chosen this particular guy's record here. So this is a, a bright red because the customer owes some money. And uh, if you want to look at the service with you for renewal, you can look at that. If you click on it, it will show you all the details. And also the other important thing is this gives you details of all the services which are due for renewal in the next 
seven days, which means your renewal team can start chasing the customer and start upselling him, etc. Probably a bit too late, but they can probably do it much earlier as well. So whereby this gives you details of services which are due for which which the customer has purchased and this gives you details, service to do for anywhere the next 30 days. This one is for seven days, this one is 30 days. So you would rather want to start the conversation up front much earlier. So that's where these things come in handy. This, this details of tickets logged, whether it's a partner, account manager details, etc., and all emails which are communicated with the customer, they get listed here. And any documents, what you have collected from the customer, they go in here as well. So this is an all encompassing summary record containing all the details for the customer. And for example, from a products and services perspective, the ones what is purchased, they appear under the section. It gives you details back to product name, uh, date on which he purchased, due date, monthly plans, etc., and how much he has to pay on a monthly basis. For example, it's a very small plan, he's paying 100 rupees, etc. So similarly, you can look at all of the plans, whatever has been purchased. And then you can also look at how much, or it, not how much, it rather how other details are there, for example, license key information, all of that information is available here. So which means you as an administrator can actually look at specifics of that service inside it. For example, for an Office 365 plan, you will look at subscription details and everything. For Azure as well, you will see subscription details, login credentials and everything here as well. So from a customer standpoint, uh, you will be able to satisfy all of his support requirements by some of these details available here. Okay? And then from an invoicing standpoint, all the invoices are generated, they appear here, quotations, orders, etc. So you can, you can be, being an administrator, you can do all of those checks yourself. Uh, without relying on anyone else, you know, and also email communications, SMS logs, audit logs, everything tracked right here. Okay? So this is a customer's record, and if you want to look at, let's say, a product manager's view, I click on the appropriate product, and then it gives me the list of all the customers who purchased this product. You know, uh, the cloud offering, one of us to subscribe, etc. You can start tracking those leads. So all through the website, for example, uh, the, in the marketplace, we have placed, for example, these kind of pop-up box. I, I hope you remember the pop-up box which popped up a little bit earlier ago. So whereby uh, it can actually capture the information for the customer's details and then prompt him uh, with where he needs help or a demo, for example, this is one area. This is an opt-in form where it gives him details about the, the page where he needs to put in a request and if he needs help to put these details here. So once he puts his details there, it actually ends up in the back end like this, whereby uh, you are able to <coughs> look at all of the opt-in information in here. So in the back end, it appears under the marketing section. It give, these are all the details which are stored here, which means when you see data here, you can add him as a lead with his phone number. You can talk to him. You can do a follow-up notes here to say, uh, Chase about Office 365, et cetera, et cetera. And it becomes a to-do list for you so that you don't forget that you need to transact and start conversation with the customer, et cetera. So there's plenty of stuff what you can do on this page an opt-in lead and that actually logically gets once you start adding him as a lead and start nurturing him they tend to appear under this lead section here and if you see a tangible revenue generating opportunity then once you've added you can start uh, nurturing him and then get him convert him to a potential etc and once you convert him from a potential you can make him as a customer as well so that's the full life cycle from a sales point of view you can track it as well and then the other important thing is if you want to know how many or renewals of services are coming in the next two days between this value then RackNap platform shows you all of that 
So for example, this tells me I have 184 customers who are due this much value and the services values amount or in terms of number uh, amounts 304, for example. So here you're able to look at renewal information and if you look at this details here, the exact renewal service, the share, the details of the service, etc. You can send an email from here, send a follow-up note from here, etc. etc. So which means in one screen, you are able to look at your forecast for the entire a month or a year or whatever you choose. You can do that directly from here uh, and then be able to start or stay on top of your renewal service as well. Okay? So primarily it's a very, very important uh, report which is used from a, from a uh, cloud services perspective for which is renewals forecast. Okay? Subsequently, you can look at, for example, from a marketing standpoint, you can also send emails, custom developed emails whereby uh, these are, these are uh, configurable against your records, for example. Uh, so this is a customer communication going in with all these details to say we have received an invoice payment, these are the details, etc., etc. So you can do custom, uh, uh, for example, uh, templates to be able to send it to your end customers as well. Okay? So that's uh, everything to do with the marketing from an email factory perspective. You can also send the SMS alerts to your end customers, uh, whereby uh, you can prompt them on a regular basis for renewal requests and things like that. And from a promotion standpoint, you can create different promotions and validity dates, etc., uh, from a promotion standpoint as well. Billing, uh, briefly mentioned quite in detail about CRM. Uh, we also looked at the renewal report. So this is primarily quotations. If you want to create quotations with a customer, you can do that as well. And from a billing standpoint, you can do you know, a list of all the orders which are coming to the platform, invoices generated, receipts, and all of that. So you can look at all of that information here. Support standpoint, ticketing module, where this gives you a list of all the support tickets logged. So any sticker submitted by the customer, it ends up with the queue here. Uh, from an inventory standpoint, this gives you a list of all the details which are in your platform, primarily from a hardware standpoint. So whenever new hardware comes in, you are requested to add that hardware in here, and that hardware is appears with this upper operating inventory, et cetera, et cetera, from the inventory code and things like that. So with this inventory management, you are fully be on top of your stock control mechanism along with the procurement processes as well. So it's a very important, powerful tool. And when you add software inventory, which is licenses and IP addresses inventory, then you can actually construct a server. You know, you can construct a virtual machine or VPS on or via RACNAP. Okay. Uh, and once once you once you construct it, you can manage that via RACNAP. Okay. So when you want to look at where this virtual machine has been provisioned, etc. you can go into assets section under data center and you select the appropriate data center where you want to look at the information. So you're chosen in a server hall three of data center, you have it here. And this is basically a rack diagram showing you all the racks which are available and this tells you which rack has been occupied, which is not occupied, and who has taken that slot. For example, this is this is occupied. For example, this is a switch. That's what is mentioned here. And this appears to be a particular machine. And that's also details of that machine also appears here. So when you hover over it, it gives you that appropriate details as well. Okay. So that is everything to do from an asset management perspective. Uh, we don't make task management HRMs public yet. And uh, this we have plenty of reports available. Most of them are exportable as well. So from a hosting standpoint, from a billing standpoint, etc. We have tons of reports available to be able to export as well. And from a knowledge base perspective, RACMAP has uh, built an exhaustive knowledge base for all the modules whereby if you are a, a business owner wanting to know certain aspects of the platform from a technical side, then you can look at the KV articles as well directly to be able to get to know more about it. So that's everything in a summary in terms of uh, customers' asset management capability as well. Okay, So to summarize, we looked at the customer's purchasing journey, 
in the marketplace. We also looked at customer's management journey on his control panel. We also looked at the administrator's panel, whereby administrator is managing all of his services for his end customer. Okay. So this is uh, all in terms of capabilities of the platform for all the three different segments. Uh, one very important aspect to, to highlight is RackNap can be installed in the cloud or in your data center as well. So for example, you can install in Azure or in your data center as well. Okay. So uh, I hope that's given you a good sense of uh, the tier one capabilities around uh, how Azure can be provisioned and processed as well. Office 365 is also very similar from a tier one perspective. I'll quickly go through that as well. For example, let me log off and make sure that uh, this is taken care. So for example, this provider is offering Office 365 as well. If you look at it, these are the different plans on offer. Uh, the customer goes to purchase a plan. Okay. He defines that this is the name of the plan. He wants to choose a different billing option. He's wanting to do a particular domain as well. So here, this domain is particularly available, for example, and now this gets added to the cart, that this is the total price to be paid, and uh, is already at the end of the purchasing journey. You know, it's as simple as it can get, okay? Whereby you're able to, uh, within two, within three clicks, he's already at the end, the end of the purchasing journey. So now the system is doing an authentication on the back end, and now this is the total value. You can look at all the rates and everything here. This is the domain purchase. This is the office, this is the plan being purchased. The total values here, and when depending on the payment of choice, when payment is done, services get provisioned. So it's, it's very simple from a tier one standpoint that the end customer is able to make a purchase as easily as it can. So with that, uh, I've come to the conclusion of the tier one flow. Okay? I would uh, want to briefly show you how a tier two workflow would also look like, primarily for a tier two distributor who is signed up with Microsoft to sell via channel partners. Okay? So I want to do a logical separation. So whatever I have demonstrated to you is all for a tier one partner. From a tier two partner, this is a website of a tier two partner. Let's call them as a distributor, for example. Demo2 is a distributor who has signed up with Microsoft for offering services. And if we look at his website, there is an Azure page giving details of the offerings here and an Office 365 page where it gives you details of the plans here. To so see here, there are no prices mentioned for the plans here. So which means this distributor has kept this as a confidential information and wanting to give that info only when needed, uh, only when authentication is done for the partner, okay? So there's no pricing info here. So what's happening is now the distributor is running a program which is called a partner program whereby he is enticing the partner with different offers and benefits and everything as well. And he's now enticing him to register with him. So he has put in a form to capture all the information which is required for this distributor to approve this request. So the form pops up with all the required information. You can upload that details as well. And then once this is done, the partner then clicks on join now, which means a request has been placed by a prospective partner to the distributor to actually uh, uh, register as a partner. Okay? So this request is coming now. So what I am now showing you is how the approval is done for this request. So this is an admin panel of a distributor whereby he is looking at the request which is coming for being a partner. Okay? So for example, now I've just logged in into the back end of that distributor. And this is basically 
have partner program listing here, whereby all the requests which is coming for approval, they appear here. For example, I'm looking at this particular request which is coming right now, which is not in an approved state. So you once a typical request is coming to you, you will obviously be commencing your backend credit checks and all of that uh, automatically. So when you do finish all of that and when you're completely happy and agree the pricing and everything with that particular partner, you come in and click on the approve button, which means uh, the partner is now uh, approved to be selling your services uh, via the tier two model, right? So when you click on approve, the the the, cost, the partner is onboarded technically, and in this scenario, the partner is provisioned with a white label website. So that's a very important thing. So he's automatically provisioned that website without any manual intervention. So when we configure your platform, we will do it in a way that the partner automatically gets the email with all the login details and passwords and everything for this particular website. Okay. So now the approval has happened, the partner has got his website provisioned, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you may choose to offer this website or not that's totally your product okay so now what i'm going to do is showcase to you how a partner is able to make a purchase on behalf of an yen customer okay so what i'm doing right now is for example here okay so i've now done the approval to become a partner whereby in the previous screen I showed you how to approve. So now I want to now go and make a purchase here. So here now the system has authenticated it. And now if you see here, this is basically the plan uh, where you pre in the previous screen we saw there was no pricing information available. And now you can see pricing information appearing here right now. So which means this is a specific price which has been agreed by this partner for the, by the distributor, okay? So this is a pricing option available. And now the, cost, the partner can choose the different uh, options in terms of billing periods and things like that. And he can place an order now. So when he's selecting this particular order, the system takes him to uh, a particular screen where he is able to choose any other plans also, whatever he would like. For example, this customer uh, who the partner is buying for wants an Azure subscription as well. And he may want, uh, let's say, uh, some uh, business suite office disk licenses as well on a yearly plan. And if you see here the pricing here, this is the partner's cost price or the price which the partner has to pay to the distributor. Okay. And now this is the pricing which is the partner will charge the end customer, which is the retail price. So this is the cost price, this is the selling price. So he makes about $18 here difference in here. So here the partner has selected this also here, and now he's going to place an order on behalf of the end customer. So in this scenario, if he is a new customer who's not yet registered, then they can put the details in here. If it's an existing customer, then the uh, partner can put in his to put in the details here as well. With this, then uh, on putting in the details, uh, the payments are uh, the payment screen also appears after that. For example, let's look at it to see how we can enable that. So the payment screen appears whereby uh, the partner can then make a payment and then get his services provision for the end customer. Okay, so this is a payment screen. Uh, the, the network international is a payment gateway. When you click on pay now, it redirects me to the payment gateway and services get provision thereafter. Okay, so this is how a purchasing flow works for a partner who wants to make a purchase on behalf of the end customer. Okay, 
and most of the other functions are very similar in terms of admin functions what i demonstrated to you earlier so i wouldn't repeat all of that right now uh, the one important thing is partners don't have capability to actually manage any inventory and uh, they don't have capability to onboard subsequent partners themselves etc so those are the two important differences what we have seen and one other important thing to highlight is if you see here here, uh, this is a, a credit limit which has been set by you. So you as a provider, distributor has set this limit on the partner to say he can sell services for this limit and this limit gets automatically adjusted depending on the number of services this partner is selling as well. Okay. And the partner can add funds or top up as well, with which he is able to add more uh, funds as well here. So that's effectively how a partner is able to make a purchase. Okay. Uh, in terms of other functions, backend configurations, etc., very similar. Uh, whereby there is a backend module here, which is which is under the settings section, okay, where user management this is where roles definition happen you can define different roles for your users uh, for your admin users you can create all the users here license keys and everything all of that they appear there and for example accounts you can do various things under the account section you can create your branding settings and everything products and services exactly where all the products are configured no, so all of these sections below, this is primarily, for example, AWS, Acronis, etc. You can define your own plans. If you are having your own products to offer, you can define them also in here and start transacting as well directly from here. And uh, for example, if I want to show you something very specific, let me show you one particular plan. Let's say Acronis here. This is exactly where you set the pricing options. So for example, this is where you set your pricing to say set up fee for monthly is this uh, and for recurring fee is this, etc. You can click on each of this is a one time fee, recurring fee or you are giving it for free, etc. And as I mentioned earlier, RackMap has multi-currency capability whereby we can connect to Google APIs and then use different exchange rates based on the appropriate day, etc. And then be able to convert this to the target currency. So when you're launching services in different markets, then you can use this conversion to be able to have different currency options as well. So for example, in here, there's already see you can see here this is USD so which means every pricing whatever you see on the page will start appearing in that appropriate currency so you can do that as well okay um, then module settings is basically where you do your integration connection settings so for example when you are having APIs to connect to then this is exactly where you put all the API details etc so this is the place where all the backend configuration works and assets, as I talked to you earlier, this gives you the information data center assets and things like that. Sales perspective, you can set sales targets, etc. Billing standpoint, you can define different currencies, gateways, etc. as well, credit notes, debit notes, etc. Support, when you want to configure support module, you can do all of that in this particular section. Marketing helps you with promotion definitions and things like that. And the server monitoring, we have integration done with Cacti and PRTG with which you are actually able to look at uh, uh, the integrations as well. Okay, uh, with uh, uh, from a monitoring standpoint. Okay, um, so in in a nutshell, RackNap is a end-to-end -end ERP of cloud services delivery, uh, helping to automate the provisioning of cloud services and also managing the entire workflow from the time the customer or lead comes to your portal till the time his services are provisioned and he is managed continuously. It's an end-to-end ERP of cloud services. 
Uh, with that, uh, I've uh, come to the conclusion of whatever I want to demonstrate in terms of capabilities of a platform for a tier one partner or a tier two partner. Uh, I open up uh, the floor for some questions. Uh, you can start typing your questions in the chat window. We'll be happy to respond to them straight away. We have about uh, eight more minutes to go, so happy to take some questions.